All right, we're Team 17, and our project was Chow Goals. It's a dynamic meal planning app. Um, I'm Tyler Driscoll. Also on my team was Roy Sofio and Gabe Waltrip. So the task we were given was to create a dynamic, um, or I guess a meal planning app with dynamic capabilities um, that will update uh, the suggestions given to you if you were to eat something outside of your suggestion. And so our approach, we settled on a web application, yeah, a web application that utilized Bootstrap to look good on both mobile and desktop. And the reason we chose this was because we each had uh, different, or I guess, experience with web development. We used machine learning to help um, us decide which types of meals user, users would like to eat. We used a Markov logic network to help apply this. What we are doing is we are looking at the past history of what users are eating. Um, the list of ingredients primarily. Relationships such as the relationship between pasta and lasagna are very tightly bound so that since they have very similar ingredients such as sausage, um, tomato paste, and noodles, the likelihood that someone who enjoys pasta and liking lasagna is very high. We also are using Microsoft's architecture to help spread out the load of different workloads so that we are so that we have a gateway which is handling all the calls between the user and the microservices a user manager which manages the definition of what is a user the, the email account and other such details um, and we're also managing the food service which includes the microservice off yeah which includes the Markov chain. And so, yeah, that. the data is stored using a SQL server, which is hosted on the Microsoft Azure uh, cloud. Um, we are using a number of stored procedures, which are limited for microservice so that a user manager cannot interact directly with the data stored, storing about the, uh, the food data. Good. So in our project, we're using Bootstrap. And Bootstrap actually helps us uh, dealing with the CSS and all the kind of like design in our project. Uh, we also attach it because the originally what we wanted to do in our uh, uh, in our project was to create a mobile app too, and just because we didn't have time, the sponsors told us you know that we we can uh, we go with the web application. Bootstrap actually have the ability to adjust the the size of the the website if you want to use it on a, on a mobile you can actually still do it without mess up all the, the website. Another thing that we used was the JavaScript. So our project was uh, divided to front-end and back-end. Uh, some of us did front-end and some, some of us were like back-end. Uh, I was one of the people that used uh, uh, dealing with the front-end. And I used JavaScript. And we mainly use it when, when the customer user sign up and we, we needed to gather information so we created a one single application to uh, gather information from the user and, and it, it actually the, the page was changing compared to uh, 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 what the user actually uh, answered, the question that he answered. And along with the JavaScript we used the uh, AngularJS and that's actually coupled between the HTML and the JavaScript, and it's what pretty much was our the framework of you know our front end. All right, so we're going to give you a quick tour of our website. This is the splash page that you see when you first log or I guess go to the website. So I'm just going to sign up for a new account. Give me that demo. 
So this is what you get when you first sign up. You are just asked to choose what kind of eater you are. So I'll go with meat lover. And as you can see, uh, different, I guess, ingredients are kind of like proteins, you know, your carbs, certain things like that. You're allowed to choose, you know, what you like and what you don't like. We give you everything at first and then you kind of select what you don't like, get rid of those. You can also apply allergies if you have any. And down here, this is where you set up your macro goals. And so um, you set your calories, and then from that, we kind of give you the, your three main macros. And those are based on percentage, so it'll calculate the grams based on your percentage and make sure they all add up to 100. Do you go back to the top? Yeah, and just change it? Just to show that it's like, you know, it's like, yeah. give you a different option. So if you're, depends on what kind of eater you are. Yeah, and then you can actually pick it up. So then you're brought to the uh, I guess the dashboard I should say, and on that you'll be able to see your daily progress of where you are right now, and um, as you can see there's nothing logged for today so far, so we can hide that, and now you'll see your suggestions for each meal. So you got breakfast up top, you got lunch, you got dinner, and you have three for each, and with the suggestions you can look at those, kind of see, get a better detail of what um, I guess all the macros are for the. Uh, that specific meal and then you can also look at recipes maybe if you want to know how to make this and we'll display that to you we'll give you the ingredients the time and then let's just say you were to eat that Hold on, do this. if you were to eat that you can log that meal now you'll see it up top and you'll see where you are so far in your day and you'll get that and so now for the dynamic part of that um, we'll show you if I log a lunch meal. Let's just say I had a sandwich. Lunch, and that had, maybe, let's say, 100 carbs. Um, 15 grams of fat. And we'll go with 30 grams of protein. That calculates the calories for you. And then we'll give it some. Ingredients. Now it's going to log that manual meal. Cool. So there's that for you. And now you have dinner suggestions that fall in line with how much you have left in your day. And you can see those right down here. And that's pretty much our app. Whenever you're ready. So the lesson learned. Uh, we have a few things that we put much learn a uh, one of them it's like time we had really limited time we wanted the first time when we started the uh, working with uh, the sponsors we we're like all over the place we wanted to do so many things but you know each of us had has like uh, other classes and also uh, we didn't have a lot of time uh, our communication um, this one, we had, we had communication with the sponsors. I can say that uh, we had kind of like a miscommunication with them and because they asked for something and we didn't really uh, uh, know what, uh, we didn't really know what they're asking for and we figured that out like in the last meeting and we pretty much got it. And then another thing we learned was uh, some management techniques. Um, since uh, the project was pretty free form, we had to kind of make our own management style. We ended up going with Scrum and uh, kind of learned how to keep that on track. Another thing that we learned was branching code. Uh, before this, or before we kind of branched code, we were just committing everything to master. And when we were committing everything to master, it was kind of easy at first because we weren't really stepping on each other's toes. But then once we did start stepping on each other's toes, um, started to realize that it was easier to branch, and by branching, it also required more review by everyone. And then also, starting from scratch was another thing we kind of learned. Um, you know, we were given a blank slate at the beginning. We kind of had to figure out where we wanted to take the direction of our project. And uh, this project as a whole kind of allowed us to get familiar with that experience. And that is about it. I hope you guys enjoyed it.